her light on. Teddy, day, what day is it? Seven? Right. Can I just get, these are his favorite ones that he has at bedtime. <gasps> Yay! I'm too big for him to eat in one go. Just drop it on my slipper then. Just drop it on my slipper. I wish I could take this little thing off him, bless him. It is Friday midday nearly. And to be honest, I've been feeling really emotional yesterday and today. So I just haven't been picking up the camera quite as much. It's one of those things I think, kind of getting in my own head a bit too much about things and overthinking stuff. And um, I'm trying to like put things into perspective and be more, sorry, had to zip that there, and be more uh, self-aware and like, I'm very good now at not letting myself go down a spiral too far, whereas before, I kind of get in these like bad moods and then it just like lasts for days, but I feel a lot better this morning. I might go into why I was feeling a bit down like in future videos, but um, for now, I'm feeling better and I've just been doing some work this morning, took Teddy for a walk because it's finally stopped raining. It was raining like all morning. So he's been happy to get outside because he gets really restless when he's staying inside all day. I'm just wearing kind of cozy clothes, nice Friday comfy clothes. What I want to talk you through later are my favourite books for positivity. And when you're feeling down, the books that you can read to help lift you up again. And then I'll link my favourite YouTubers and podcasts down below as well. So if you're feeling in a bit of a funk and just not feeling yourself, then these books might be able to assist you. A few of you have asked what books I like to read and what podcasts I listen to, so I will um, listen to your request there and tell you all about them. Got some tax stuff now, so I need to email that to my accountant. And um, yeah, I will check in with you a bit later on to show you my books. So as promised, I'm here showing you my bookshelf close up. Try and keep my books as minimal as possible. I don't want to have too many at one time. So you can see it's kind of overflowing a bit, so I need to get rid of some, I think. But I like to keep the kind of self-development ones because I find myself rereading them and getting like new takeaways from them each time. Let's start at the bottom. I'm not going to talk about every single one, but you can have a read of the titles while we're here. Uh, the Power, which is the second book to The Secret, which is quite a well-known uh, self-development book. I think it's better than The Secret, but I also think The Secret is very superficial and doesn't really go into quantum physics and your energy, rather than, it's all about getting more stuff rather than actually creating positive and lasting change. That's just my opinion though. <laughs> one about work, one about eyesight, which is really interesting about how your eyesight's more of a limiting belief. And these are the kind of ones that I don't read that much, but I put them here anyway. So Intention Experiment, and that's all about how energy can be transferred around the world. Two really good books by Dr. Joe Spencer, which I've mentioned him before. Uh, Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself and You Are the Placebo. All about the placebo effect and how that affects your biological body and how to rewire new beliefs and new actions and ways of being into your life. Then on the other side of things, there's Abraham Hicks, which um, I have the first book, Ask and It's Given, and The Vortex, which is all about like relationships and that kind of thing. Um, both really, really good. I'd say they're quite foundational books in self-development if you want to read them. Um, I definitely recommend them as beginners. Uh, Creative Visualization, Gabby Bernstein, The Universe Has Your Back. That's a really easy read, really good. Uh, the Big Leap by Gay Hendricks, all about taking your life to the next level. Big Magic, read, I did a whole video on that one actually, by Elizabeth Gilbert, um, all about creativity. Eckhart Tolle, A New Earth, love Eckhart Tolle books. And a Barcelona travel guide there. Course in Miracles, I found this on my Nan's shelf um, after she passed away. I just took it because I thought maybe I'll get around to reading it one day. It's really thick, but I don't think um, I'll be reading that anytime soon. Marie Kondo, The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up. Love that book because I'm a big fan of tidying. Uh, Woman Code by Elisa Vitti, which I was reading to understand more about women's cycles and hormones, that kind of thing. So it's really interesting. The Archetype Diet, that was a really interesting read. I don't really believe all of what it says, but I found it quite interesting. Anyway, it's all about how women have different archetypes and different body shapes and how different foods suit different types of women and what you base your self-worth on. The self-worth bit I found very interesting because it talks about how 
some women base, base their self-worth on career, some people base their self-worth on how they physically look and some people base their self-worth on how caring and nurturing they are to people. So different types um, of archetypes and that book goes into it in more detail. And if you want to know what I am, I'm a femme fatale, so you can look that up and you can do your own quiz on her website. Her name is Dana James, if you're interested. This is a recipe book that my friend Zoe got me and this one too, which are like hashtag short recipes. Um, my friend Claire got me this a while ago. So we got me this one. These are like more foodie things. Medical Medium, Life Changing Foods, really love this book. Liz Earl, The Good Gut Guide, when I was like into my kombucha and kefir phase. And all that sauerkraut stuff. I don't really read it anymore, but it's nice to have um, just to refer to if I want to. How to Style Your Brand, quite an interesting read on branding. A Thrive Through Yoga by Nicola Jane Hobbs. This uh, I found her on Instagram and I just found it really resonated with her message, so I got her book. Lord of the Rings illustration sketchbook. Not a fan of Lord of the Rings, but again, this is my nan's book that she had on her shelf and we used to read it together and look for the illustrations, so I kept that. Face Paint by Lisa Eldridge. This is a book all about the history of makeup. I haven't actually got through it yet, I'm about halfway through. Where makeup originated from and like the Egyptians and how it's progressed through time. I love Lisa Eldridge. Random. A notebook and up here these are my like current reads so this one is autobiography of a yogi now I got this book because Steve Jobs apparently always like handed it out to everyone that he knew he, it was the book that like got him on his path and he loved it and I've had a lot of really successful people who have read this and it's like changed their life so yeah pick that up but it's kind of quite a hard read like the book is it's a bit unusual and um, I'm finding it quite hard to get through, but I'm going to try and persevere. I'm not very far. The Surrender Experiment by Michael A. Singer, which I found really, really good. And that is predominantly about letting go and how letting go in your life can open up so many more doors than you would uh, be able to create through your mind. He just basically devotes his life to surrendering to things and the greater, the higher power and going with the flow rather than trying to control outcomes and he ends up being like a multi-millionaire and having his own business even though he originally wanted just to sit in the woods on his own he ends up having this whole business and still being really centered and still being really calm in himself. I highly recommend that, I read that recently. Um, Understanding Human Design by Karen Curry. This is a book all about human design obviously and if you want to know more about that then look up Jenna Zoe and her podcast that she's been on. Kind of like astrology but a lot more uh, personalised for you. Seat of the Soul by Gary Zukav. Zukav. Uh, I've had a lot of people talk about this book so I got it and it's not been quite what I thought so I still haven't read it yet. It's a bit again hard to get into. You Can Hear a Life by Louise Hay is a classic. I love this book and it's kind of one of those go-to books. This one is one I picked up recently by Melissa Ambrosini and it is called Mastering Your Mean Girl. And this is really, it's kind of like what I already knew but I just like the way she writes. And she's so pretty. The No BS Guide to Silencing Your Inner Critic. Wildly wealthy, fabulously healthy and bursting with love. Now I just find her style of writing really cool and the whole idea of your like ego being a mean girl. Mindfulness colouring book, love doing a bit of colouring every now and again. Jane Eyre, Charlotte Bronte, my nan had got me this, it's like a gold uh, paged book. Jane Eyre was my favourite book growing up so always kept that on my shelf even though I don't really read it anymore. Money, a user's guide is by Laura Waitley and Rosh, my friend, got me that for my birthday. So, so interesting, I wrote a whole Instagram post on how I found it really helpful. Just like basic stuff, like even like credit cards, mortgages. I mean, I guess some people know this stuff, but like I didn't and <laughs> there's a lot of things that you should be taught in school in the book. And it even goes into money and well-being, especially if you're trying to save like I am and be more conscious with your cash. Then we have a Buddha bowl book, which my sister got me for my birthday too. Love Buddha bowls and there's so many nice recipes in this book. The books here. This book I am currently reading, The Keeper of Lost Things by ooh, Ruth Hogan. I love the cover, it's so pretty. And yeah, it's been really good so far. Not very far, but my sister got this for me for my birthday and I thought I should read a more fictional book. And I've got Gratitude Journal, which Vicky got me. And it says, take time to reflect. So every day I write down 
for, I think it's three things that I'm grateful for um, in this book as a record. And then notebook from Sainsbury's, quite pretty. And a eye mask, silk eye mask, smells of lavender, it's very nice. So that is my whole bookshelf. Everything is on there. Isn't that right, Teddy? So, I'm not going to link all those books down below because that is far too much to link. And I don't think YouTube would even let me link that many items in the um, field. So if you've got any questions about the books I mentioned, uh, let me know. Or if you've got a particular area of your life you want to work on or anything like that, I can recommend specific books for you that I found have helped me in um, area, different areas. So like whether it's health, um, self-image, confidence, relationships, that kind of thing, I can give you some advice there. I hope you found it interesting to see my bookshelf. I will also be linking my favourite podcasters and self-development coaches down below so you can have a look at them if you want to as well. Good morning everyone, Teddy and I are about to go on a walk. It is Saturday morning and I'm going to mix or combine this vlog with yesterday's vlog because don't feel like I had enough content yesterday to put up one vlog, so today is going to be a bit more interesting as it's the weekend. Teddy and yeah, we're going to go for a walk now, and then I'm going to come back and finish um, doing my online life coaching course, which I'm doing currently. Uh, I haven't done it in a while, so I'm looking forward to going back on it again. And then I'm meeting Robin and Katrina at about one o'clock later, and we're going to get a coffee and have a catch up, so that'd be lovely. And I think Robin's bringing Milo, her dog who is really, really cute. He's a Pomsky. So I will show you him. <clears throat> I'm gonna have a bit of a self-care Sunday evening tonight because tomorrow I am working at Vista Village. I'm doing some tent work again. So I'm not sure how much I'll get to vlog. I'll show you around. Um, just head you with a milk carton. Um, I'm working at Ralph Lauren Kids tomorrow. So we will see how that goes. But I've got a couple of things to get from town as well. I need to get a bone for Teddy to chew on and come over here he's making too much noise and I want to look at some plain dark jeans because I have to wear some for work and I don't have any currently so that is the plan and um, I will see you later. Lunch I'm having the tomato and basil soup I made yesterday it turned out a bit too basil-y but um, if you put less in it'll be a lot nicer. I'm having it cold because it's a bit like gazpacho and added some chilli flakes and black pepper I'll put the recipe in the description box below, so if you want to make tomato soup, look there. And then I'm having a slice of slightly well done bread, um, toast with butter. I do prefer toast more well done, so having this now. Teddy's playing outside in his Christmas jumper. Let me go find him. Probably going for a wee. Yep, he's weeing. Hey. So this is what I'm wearing today by the way. The jumper or slash cardigan is from Bershka. Really soft, really cozy, nice pocket. Um, this top is, I've got toothpaste here so I had to like wet it. Um, it's like an off the shoulder one from ASOS. But I hardly wear it because it's a bit colder now. I'm wearing that. It's like a tan crossover one which I've tucked into my jeans. And these jeans are from ASOS. And this necklace is accessorised. Um, a scarf I'm going to put on now is from Mango, which you've seen before. This is not going to go well. Ooh. And now I'm about to head across the road to meet Katrina and Robin. But he's wearing his Christmas jumper and we got to go. Come on. It is a lot later now. A lovely catch up at Filter with Katrina and Robin and Milo, cute little Milo. Teddy had a good attempt at playtime with him and then ended up just living off cheese the whole time. So now I've just come into town and picked up what I needed to get. I got Teddy some more dental sticks, which aren't very exciting. Uh, more celery for my juice. Some kombucha, because I was thirsty on my walk around and I love kombucha. And then I picked up some jeans that I need to wear for work tomorrow. They were from Dorothy Perkins in the end. In Bissell there's only like two places to get jeans, New Look or Dorothy Perkins. This pair in Dorothy Perkins and they were 20% off. I tried on like 15 pairs of jeans. I hate trying on jeans. <laughs> I feel like a lot of women have the same struggle. I just don't like any jeans on me really. So I was quite happy to find these that I thought were quite decent. 
Um, they're size 10, short because the 8 do fit, but I found the 10 a bit more flattering, a bit less like skin tight, so you can't see as many lumps and bumps. So they're 20% off, which made them £15, so really good for jeans. And even though there were another pair that I liked, the Frankie soft ones, um, I decided not to get them because I thought old me would have been like, I'm saving money, I'm going to get two, but new me was like, you only need one pair of jeans at the moment, so just get the one that you intended to and don't just buy stuff for the sake of buying it. So I'm very proud of myself for uh, leaving the other pair of jeans there, so go, go me, <laughs> basically. And yeah, that was all I got. Oh, I got a bone for Teddy from the butchers, like a beef marrow bone. So I'm out tomorrow and he's all anxious. Uh, hopefully he can chew on that for a while and it'll make him at least a bit happier. Sorry, my hand's shaking. And it'll make his six hours without me a bit more bearable. <laughs> like my parents are probably more affectionate than I am. Successful trip to town. Now I'm gonna go home and unpack everything and then hopefully Teddy will be nice and tired so I can do my self-care Sunday routine tonight on Saturday. Um, so I'm gonna put some fake tan on, do a face mask, sort out my nails, do a little pedicure and laser hair removal, that kind of thing. Might do a, oh, I need to do a hair mask as well. So that's the plan. And then I'll be fresh and ready for my day in retail tomorrow. It's been a long time. I'm not really looking forward to it. I think I forget how tiring and like exhausting retail can be and how boring. Like I used to just stand there watching my, watching or looking at my watch all the time, waiting for the hours to pass, but hopefully it'll be okay. And yeah. I will see you guys a bit later on. Back I forget what I put on the internet. <laughs> but anyway, I'm wearing these llama pyjamas from ASOS. I've got my fake tan saint -Tropez Express on, which will develop in about three hours for the darkest tan. So I'm going to wash it off then, about nine o'clock. No, eight o'clock. And I've got my Philip Kingsley elasticizer on my hair. So I've got my hair in, like, princess layer things. Um, yeah, so that's done. Did like a foot scrub, scrub my feet. Um, my nails are ready to paint with this OPI Nail Envy later on when I have a shower. So I'm gonna put this on um, like a nail strengthener. I'm not allowed to wear nail polish at work tomorrow, so this will do. And I'm gonna use this foot cream as well, put my feet in some socks. I wanted to share that I'm going to do some at home dermaplaning tonight. So if you don't know, dermaplaning is basically removing like the dead skin on top of your skin, basically. Um, and you can do it at home. I watched Annie Jaffrey's video, which I'll link down below. And she mentioned that she uses these Tinkle uh, razors, which I got from Amazon, only a few pounds. And that's how she does hers. So you kind of just shave your face, which sounds really weird. We don't realize how much hair is on your face until you do these. All you do is like a downwards motion like this. And it makes, um, all the hair disappear. So I tend to do like side of my face and like this bit here. And you kind of hear it coming off as well, which is really satisfying. Um, so it leaves your skin feeling like really like glass-like and smooth and makeup goes on smoother as well. So I really recommend doing that. And you can also do your brows with it, but I don't. Uh, yeah, so that's a lot cheaper than going to a salon to have it done. So I like to do mine at home every couple weeks or so. So, oh, and also upper lip, very good for that. And yeah, I don't have particularly dark hair, but I just find it does um, look a lot better when I've done it before. Face mask and nose strip and exfoliate. And then once I wash my hair, dry my hair, then I will be ready. And I'm gonna make a cauliflower crust margarita pizza for dinner, which is gonna be very nice, hopefully. And yeah, I'll show you what that looks like if it goes well. I'm gonna edit this tonight and then chill probably, so. Thank you for watching this vlog. I hope you have enjoyed seeing what I got up to the last couple of days. Uh, nothing overly exciting, but um, just a couple of days of my life. So thank you for watching and I will see you again tomorrow for another vlog. Bye guys.